Hey, what's up? It's Sando from Sound News. And you can probably guess which is the most requested DAC review to be featured around here. You've been asking me about Gustav 826 over here, over email, Instagram, Facebook, and finally I can reply to you all with a single in-depth article and video review, which I've been working for about a week now. So, it's any good? Well, let's find out. Let's go! The only way to improve the build quality and the looks of newer devices is, you guessed it, to complain about all the devices and that's exactly what I was doing with those old looking SMSL devices with that Fro and unpolished X26 Pro of Gustard. I believe that my words found their mark because clearly there is something else with R26, with A26, I simply cannot complain about this one anymore. Uh, even that uh, slight asymmetrical display of R26 have been taken care of, so just look at it, it's absolutely amazing looking. This time around, Gustard surpassed not only themselves, but probably all hyper makers from China uh, in terms of build quality and looks. Uh, obviously, we're talking about a fully machined aluminum unit with rounded corners, with best aluminum fit in the business. Getting my stamp of approval and the acceptance of my wife as a great looking device. It has the simplest front panel with an on off touch button on its left, an OLED screen in the middle, followed by volume and menu buttons uh, to its right. On its back you'll see the widest variety of digital inputs as USB type B, USB type C used for firmware updates, i2s via HDMI, coaxial, optical, AAC and a 10 MHz clock input so you can use it with the C16 and C18 clock generators. As R26 before it, A26 uses the same streamer and renderer, uh, which can be enabled via its Ethernet port uh, that is currently UPnP and Rune enabled, with additional protocols to be added in the future via firmware updates. The usual RCA and XLR outputs are present and those are variable or fixed, so you can use it as a DAC and preamplifier if you please. As for tech inside it, A26 uses a similar layout to that found on R26, so basically split into three rooms with uh, thick metal plates in between. As opposed to R26 discrete, we're dealing with an oversampling unit that ditched those resistor ladders in favor of the newest and highest performing silicon of AKM, more exactly the AK4499EX, which superseded the AK4499EQ. Compared to its old assembling, the newest silicon is a dual channel one, meaning that for a true balanced signal, you'll need two DAC chips, and that's exactly what Gustav did with the A26. The newest silicon no longer has an internal Delta Sigma modulator, meaning that an additional chip will be needed for that specific task. I don't want to make this video super boring and super technical, so I'll stop here, but if you want to know every single chip and how everything works together, then I recommend you my written review, which I left below, explaining its inner workings in a very detailed manner. All in all, as it was the case with R26 Discrete, Everything seems over-engineered, starting with its power supply, filtering stages, clock management, error correction, and finishing with the A conversion and analog output stages. I don't see major compromises, only high-quality components that will surely leave a big mark when music will start doing its mojo. Alright guys, let's check how it sounds in both a stereo and headphone setup, so let's hit some eardrums. Sound-wise, if you already checked my uh, X26 Pro reviews, uh, R26 Discrete uh, reviews, then you know that those earned uh, a legendary status in my rankings, those are exceptional sounding units. And I believe that A26 joined forces and it sits exactly in the middle tonality-wise, because it's not as sharp like X26 Pro and it's not as fuzzy, warm and super engaging like R26, so it sits exactly in the middle. And this is a very technical sounding unit, but most importantly, I believe that it manages to be technical and uh, very organic and natural sounding at the same time. 
And while technicality is very, very important for me, I mean, half of my videos, half of my written reviews are about technicalities. Those are very important, don't get me wrong. But I cannot listen to music if uh, such metallic boxes are not speaking with my soul, you know, are not making me sad, happy, or whatever, just feel anything. And I really like when such units uh, are pouring gasoline in the mornings or maybe are calming my spirits uh, in the evenings. And if that is not happening, I will not listen to music uh, on that devices. I will probably use something else that does that much better. And luckily, A26 is both a very technical but also a very natural and organic sound unit. You are watching this review because you are also searching for that perfect balance in between being natural sounding but also technical sounding. And I do believe that Gustard finally struck a really nice balance in between that. And while I said very similar words about uh, R26 Discrete, this one is just 50-50, you know, in terms of uh, fun factor, warmth, naturalness, and technicalities. R26 were more like 60% fan factor and 40% technicalities, but this one is exactly in the middle, so uh, that makes me very happy about this one. After listening to hundreds of DACs, I slowly accepted the fact that I really like uh, honest sounding units that are putting me everything on a plate, that are trying to go to 11, that are very serious, the whole bloody time, that have no sense of humor, you know, that are not fooling around. And I can describe my core, the Electronics Dave, as being such a unit, you know, always being unforgiving always going to 11 in terms of uh, technicalities. And if you look around, everything high-end, top of the line, is really unforgiving. So be it an American quarterback horse, maybe a 16-cylinder a Bugatti Veyron, everything is really unforgiving. And as I was saying, that core Dave is exactly like that. And I do believe that in the right conditions, especially via its Ethernet port, this one is just a notch below that core Dave in terms of performance. And, you know, considering that it costs just a tenth the price of Gore Dave, uh, that makes me extremely happy because you can have that kind of sound at so much less money. So when it comes to price to performance ratio, I don't believe uh, there is a better unit right now than A26. Moving forward to dynamics and transitive response, I was quite surprised by that uh, Gustard R26 uh, discrete because that one was fast and impactful sounding uh, at the same time, something that usually is not happening that often with uh, r 2 r leather ducks. Those are mostly soft, gentle, mellow sounding, not that fast sounding. And it's the other way around with uh, cheap based converters. Those are very fast sounding, but not that impactful. Those are not delivering, you know, the full might of the Thunder God. But uh, this one is actually even more impactful sounding compared to R26 uh, Discrete, mostly because the sound is mostly mid-forward. It's much closer to your face. Uh, the sounds are not traveling a very long distance until uh, reaching your eardrums. Uh, the sound is slightly clearer, slightly more transparent, and of course you feel that the notes are slightly weightier. So this one will pound uh, very hard in the bass. Uh, this one is a very dynamic sounding unit. I remember raising my eyebrows when I was listening to Sonar and uh, Symbolico via R26. Uh, the sound was very uh, full, you know, full-bodied, warm, creamy, uh, without any kind of veil that I was uh, normally getting from R2 other Dax, and it was much faster and clearer at the same time. With A26, it's more intimate sounding, so the sounds are not traveling such long distances. And ultimately, it feels uh, slightly more energetic somehow, especially in the low end, in the bass. And after connecting this one to Atrophomatic Primavera and Inlium AM23R via Hyphen Susvara, I felt massive shifts in dynamics, getting a punchier and a livelier sound at the same time, as if I was describing a bass heavy headphone. Soundstage wise, A26 is really good, it's impressive. It's much bigger sounding compared to, say, Topping D90SC, SMSL VNVD2, SMSL SU10, uh, Eversolo DAC Z8. So this one is deeper, is bigger, is wider sounding. Um, usually, cheap based converters are offering you a 2.5D, you know, pseudo 3D feeling. So not that impressive, not that deep sounding. Uh, especially compared to R2 Walla the DAX, which are just outstanding sounding in here in this department. 
but that is not really the case with this one. This is amazing sounding in here in terms of depth. And usually with open bear headphones, you cannot spot a big difference in terms of DAC. So they will sound, especially in terms of soundstage, they will sound more or less the same, you no know, small differences. Uh, even with something like half Mansus Vara, by putting them on some high-end electronics, high-end DAX and high-end amplifiers, and they will take off. They will sound just massive big, and that was exactly happening with A26 connected to Enium AM23R or Trafomatic Primavera. A26 is also an excellent machine when pointing out the location of the notes. The so-called imaging is just outstanding. And honestly, it's better even compared to R26. Everything is very defined. You know exactly where everything is located in your room. So everything is very sharp and very clear sounding compared to that slightly fuzzier R26. However, when it comes to scale, soundstage and depth as a wall, I do believe that R26 is better because it sounds unlimited by comparison. Uh, with some live recordings, you feel that it has a much longer trail, a longer decay. You have plenty of time to appreciate, you know, the beauty of that musical instrument, of that voice, its vibration. Something that is not happening so amazing with A26. And as I mentioned before, A26 is impressive, but not as legendary sounding as R26 sounds with acoustic and live music. Sounding closer to your face and just altering the preconception of an unlimited sound. People tend to believe that highly resolving and highly transparent are more or less the same things. But no, for me, I don't think that is really the case. You can get highly resolving units nowadays pretty easily on the cheap, even in between 200 and 500 bucks. There are plenty of options to choose from, from SMSL, from Topping, even from Gustard. They have that uh, X16, uh, which is very detailed, highly resolving, always giving you 100% in terms of detail retrieval. Uh, usually, you know, uh, good measuring DACs will be very detailed sounding. However, not all of them will be transparent sounding. And I observe that usually you need a beefy output stage, overkill power supply implementation that will uh, stretch that music much wider. It will make it much deeper so you can bypass some sounds. Uh, you can walk in around your music much easier, you can zoom in, zoom out much easier, you can focus on some backing vocals much easier. And for me that is transparency and I'm happy to report that A26 is both a very resolving but also highly transparent sounding DAC. My core Dave is playing music without colorations and it's so far my number one DAC at showing me what the heck is happening behind my tunes. And after going back and forth between A26 and R26, it was clear to me that A26 is much closer to Core Dave, getting highly detailed yet organic sounding. I also checked this performance in my studio setup, but before I tell you more about that, you should know that for the best results with my Core Dave, I need three devices. I need a streamer, I need a Core Dave, and I need a preamplifier for the best results. But with this one, I'm killing three birds with just a single stone because it can work as a wild streamer, as a high performance DAC, and as an adequate uh, preamplifier. Adequate because it doesn't have a true line amplifier circuit. That voltage output is not amplified, but it's attenuated. So it's more like a passive preamplifier than like an active preamplifier. So when it uh, replaced three devices working as a streamer, DAC and preamplifier, uh, honestly, it exceeded my expectations. It sounded just amazing. With the exception of dynamics, uh, everything was not super mega engaging. So it was not sounding as good as it sounded in my headphone setup. So I added that uh, Chord Ultima 3 preamplifier and of course the life and joy uh, returned home <laughs> into this room. Everything was much better, everything felt more engaging and punchier sounding. So if you want the best results, uh, use its streamer, its DAC, uh, follow it with an uh, integrated amplifier or with a dedicated preamplifier plus power amplifier. And a small birdie told me that a dedicated Gustav preamplifier will be coming uh, very soon. Uh, it was specifically made for uh, their flagship line for a26, R26, X26 Pro, so stay tuned for that. Moving on to frequency response, uh, there is definition in the bass, there is texture, there is depth, there is impact in the bass. 
Uh, this is a highly engaging sounding unit, mostly because it does sub bass and mid bass very well. Actually, in this department, it's slightly better compared to my own R26, uh, mostly because it's slightly more dynamic, slightly more impactful sounding with everything that has to do with bass. And regardless if I was using my headphones or uh, loudspeakers, my earlobes were always uh, you know, flying in the air. And if you love your bass and everything that has to do with bass, then uh, A26 will deliver you maximum enjoyment. As I said before, A26 is being powered by two flagship AKM silicon that use uh, velvet sound technology, multi-bit modulators and switch resistor LAD attack. Trying to mimic the sound of art while LAD attacks as much as possible by trying to be natural, organic, lifelike. And plenty of uh, cheap based converters trying doing that in the past. I do believe that A26 is doing that better. So it's the closest one that tries to sound like an R26, if that makes any sense. So for me, mid-range is more about vibrations, about emotions, about feeling something while listening to music. And I do believe that A26 does that very well. Comparing the A26 with R26, uh, the biggest difference was felt in the treble. R26 always juggles with this idea of bringing joy and satisfaction while listening to music, uh, never making you feel bad while listening to some bright recordings, even put on some bright amplifiers, bright uh, headphones and loudspeakers. It just tries to bring you some you know, satisfaction while listening to music, but slightly rolling off some energy from the upper treble. Not detail, just energy from the upper treble. X26 Pro, by comparison, is detailed and sharp sounding. R26 is detailed without being sharp sounding. And A26 is exactly in the middle. So it gets a little bit of sharpness and as much details and transparency as you can possibly desire. For a proper showdown in between A26 and R26, please head over to my website. There is a link below. I broke it down into smaller pieces so you can better understand all the differences that I felt and heard while comparing these units. It's on the chapter 10 and I believe it's a comparison that you shouldn't really miss, so check it out. As for my conclusions, Gustav, you are on fire. Please take a chill pill and let others catch up. Rarely I'm testing units that have little to no compromises, you know, little to no drawbacks. And except for that plasticky remote control, I cannot complain about its look, about its build quality, and most importantly, about its sound quality. There are a few differences compared to R26, and that's why you need to check out that written review and decide for yourselves which one is better suited for your needs. This hobby is not about spending as much cash as possible, about pleasing some online communities, about pleasing your audiophile friends, your ego, me, or someone else. No, this hobby is about finding a perfect balance. I do believe that A26 is like that, easily winning my gold award and my stamp of approval as probably the best sounding at 1500 US dollars. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed my review. Don't forget to check out a much longer in-depth review below. It contains about four times the information. And as usual, be positive, be optimistic, and I'll see you soon. Cheers.